Shio, everybody. Today is October 13th. I'm joined here with Dr. Bunio again. Dr. Bunio, how have you been? I've been fine, Chris. Thanks for having me back. Yeah, we got taken off the air there for a minute with uh, technical issues. And so we appreciate the community uh, coming back and joining us uh, to, to talk about the COVID-19 updates. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have a lot of new information. Of course, lately, everybody's seen the numbers. Um, and so what we've had is we've had a struggle um, with keeping the numbers down, we've seen a, a, a sharp increase. What do we do to mitigate that? We've seen a lot of things happening um, in the community that we need to talk about. Yeah, so first of all, I want to uh, shout out to all the people that are working so hard, you know, both the uh, tribal public health and, um, you know, the hospital team. Um, they are trying really hard. We're experiencing a surge right now, and it has taken off. Uh, I think in one of our earlier uh, episodes, uh, I talked about how this virus grows exponentially, right. which means it grows fast. Right. And that's what we're seeing right now. Um, so what we're trying to do is use the tools that we have been practicing and using before that were successful. And the bit, one of the biggest ones there is contact tracing. Okay. Um, you know, so it's, it's really important, you know, that if um, you are unfortunate enough to catch this virus, uh, then public health is going to contact you. Right. And they're going to do what's called contact tracing. They're going to ask you to try to remember who you were around for a significant length of time without a mask on. You know, over the previous, usually it's a couple days before you tested, we're going to go back. This is extremely important. I can't emphasize enough that if your phone rings, uh, please pick it up. Please answer the call. Please answer the questions. We're not trying to get anybody in trouble. We're just trying to protect this community. So that's going to be vital. Right. Um, The second piece is then uh, they will, public health will tell you whether or not you should be tested or not. They'll they'll help. They'll talk to you. Help you to understand whether or not you really were at risk and if you are then they're going to recommend you get a test okay now we have seen this sudden surge it's kind of kicked up over the last couple of weeks it's, if you look at the facebook page right uh we are so far in the red that we had to make the graph bigger i noticed that the the, the red spikes <laughs> yeah. way it was bouncing off the ceiling for a minute and so you know we're up around you know 80 i think it's 86 uh cases per day per hundred thousand so what that really means is uh because we have a smaller population we don't have a hundred thousand right. people here is we're seeing about uh eight or nine cases a day turning positive whereas before we were at about two okay you know two to three you know so this is a this is a big change, and it hit us. We knew it was coming. I honestly didn't think it was going to happen this soon. Right. And it has overwhelmed the um, the hotline and the uh, testing team. But we have uh, pulled people out of their jobs. We've sent them down there today. We are determined to get caught up and get everybody the test that they need. So please be bear with us we we're working as hard as we can good okay so it, so once you test um if you test positive you're going to get a call from the public health the local public health it'll probably come from a 359 number yeah. but the tricky part is that if you get named as a, a contact was it called a contact i yeah. guess uh that would be coming from an outside number yeah and so i know if you're like me uh you've been getting a lot of these uh, political ad phone calls spam i just turn them off immediately and I think it's important that, to know that this number is going to be coming from an outside number, contact tracing. So um, hopefully they'll leave a message, though, that you can return a call. Is, is that something that you, of your understanding? Um, I, I think so. Okay. You know, I don't, uh, you know, I know that we have a separate team of contact tracers. This is all they do all day. Okay. And they're calling people and asking those questions. So, uh, yeah, I agree with you. This is a time where you may have to pick up the odd, yeah, extend odd the number. warranty on your car yeah. <laughs> call, <Yeah. laughs> and just hang up on that one. But when when you hear it's it's uh, public health, right. contact tracing, very very important that you answer that call for sure. Um, what are what are some things that we can do as a community? You know, I've seen a lot of, um, I guess we say that the screws are loosening around us, uh, with so- certain states are opening up fully. Um, and, you know, we've now hit phase three in North Carolina. What are some of the things that we need to do as a community to make sure that we're keeping as safe as possible? 
so I think that we need to do the things that we've been messaging all along. And um, I think people, it's understandable, people have gotten tired. Right. They they want to see their families, their loved ones, they want to go out. But um, the majority of cases that we are seeing right now are tied to um, congregate settings. You know, these are people getting together as a group inside usually, although okay. outside is not completely safe. Right. Uh, without masks and not social distancing. Gotcha. Those are contributing to a very large number of our cases. And then, of course, they go out and they go home. And then the second big category is it gets spread within the house. And that's hard to that's hard to stop. Um, you know, if it, it's hard to isolate someone within your house. If you can do it, that's great. If not, um, we just kind of have to quarantine the whole house all right let's talk a little bit about quarantine what what are we facing there once you get put on quarantine we've seen some issues potentially where uh, folks have been uh, quarantined and then tested negative and think it's okay to leave quarantine is that's not yeah. the right approach correct that's correct so quarantine is you've been exposed and you may get the virus and you and there's what's called an incubation period. So That's you, important to talk about the incubation period before you test because I think a lot of folks yeah. are failing there as well. Yeah. So if if you, Chris, if you were exposed to someone, we're going to start counting uh, from that date. We would recommend that you get tested around six to eight days after that because okay. if you test too early, it's going to be negative. It's going to be a negative, a false you, negative potentially. That's right. And then you could turn positive later. Right. So there's kind of a sweet spot six to eight days later, get a test there. But here's the important part. Even if that test is negative, your quarantine is still 14 days. Correct. Right. Because you could actually turn positive any day within that 14 day period. So I know there's a lot of people that really uh, are anxious and they want to get a test and they're hoping that then they can go back to their lives. But uh, that's not the way this virus works. Right. This virus can stay kind of incubating uh, for, you know, 10, 11, 12 days. Most of the most people will turn positive within that, you know, on that by on that, that first fifth, five, six days. Yeah, the five, six days. But there's some that it takes longer. So that's right. So if you go out and you get a test on day 10 and it's negative, you still got four more days of quarantine. Right. Sorry. S stick to the 14 days. Yeah. Be just, play it safe. Just plan play it for safe. It. And, you know, I think, uh, you know, one of the other things is I, I don't think people really understand how important it is to quarantine. Right. Um, we know that people can start spreading the virus usually for a couple of days before they even feel sick. Right. So if you're not quarantining, even though you feel fine and you go out, you could be passing the virus on to other people. Right. OK, so uh, we've covered quarantine. We've covered the hotline. Um, and now we're, we've talked about some of the mitigation efforts that, you know, watch the big gatherings, make sure that you guys are are kind of taking care of your families, taking care of your community. Um, what What's the message moving forward? How do we get out of the red? Well, we are going to have to double down on on our efforts right now okay. as as individuals uh, to protect this community, to wear the mask, um, wait six right. feet apart, and wash our hands. Uh, I think it's particularly important over the next couple of weeks. You know, when people are going to get discouraged, they're going to see that 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 graph it keeps going up. But when you start, you know, doubling down and following the guidance, it's going to take a couple of weeks to see the results, of to that. see the results. So, you know, before we went on air, we talked about how, you know, this could be a silver lining. This could be a wake up call. Right. Because if this hit us in the middle of, you know, or the winter, um, right, if people decided around Thanksgiving that yeah. big family gatherings were OK again and they're not right. yet, then uh, we, could have, we could be in even bigger trouble than we are right now. So we have an opportunity now to, to suppress this. That's a great message and a challenge to the community. If we want to celebrate Thanksgiving together, we want to celebrate the holidays, you know, Christmas and New Year's together, one better way to do that is to crush this whole thing right now. Let's do our 14-day, uh, you know, let's share, let's share our contact tracing information. And let's make sure that we can get these numbers back down in the in the yellow and green by Thanksgiving. It'd be a lot safer when you do have your family gatherings. 
Yeah, and and hopefully, you know, hey, if the weather's good and you can do something outside right. um, where you can maintain some distance, and uh, you know, uh, that would be ideal too. Yeah, that'd yeah. be perfect. So, uh, so if you do get contacted, what's what's the risk, Doctor Bunio, if we don't share our contacts with with your staff? The risk is that um, there's going to be people out here who are infected and don't know it. And that's going to be a direct result of you not sharing that yeah. simple information with them. Yeah, and everybody out there who's spreading the virus, you yeah. know, we've said on average they're going to infect two other people. But, right. um, you know, we know of cases, they call them super spreader events, right. where um, one case early on in South Korea, one person uh, was tied to 5,000 infections by wow. the, before it was over. And that was just sort of this exponential growth. Like, you know, she didn't infect 5,000 people, but, you know, she probably infected about 100, and then it was 200, and then 400, and then right. 800. It was, it yeah, there was take a multiplier. Long. You know, you talked about early on, there was a multiplier effect. Two, two and a half. At one point, it was maybe two, two and a half. Yeah, it was around, it's around that as the average uh, of people that someone can uh, pass the, the to virus spread. to. Right. So I think. I'm not really sure why people are might be reluctant. For the most part, I think people have been really cooperative and and helped us. Good. But there are some I think who are under the impression that their 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 friends are going to be mad at them or or they're right. getting them in trouble. And you're not. Right. Um, you know, if you can warn somebody that they might be contagious, they should go get tested so they can take precautions not to infect their children, their grandmother. Right. I think in the end they would be thankful. Right, absolutely. Um, you know, and to the to the families out there and to the folks uh, that, that have been impacted by this, uh, you know, I share with Dr. Bunio and, and tribal leadership. You know, our condolences, our thoughts, our prayers are with your families. This is not about shaming anybody or or embarrassing anybody. This is happening around us. You could easily pick this up walking through, uh, you know, the the mist or the vapors of someone that had had maybe coughed in the hallway before you walked through. This isn't about shaming. We're thinking about you, and we're also thinking about our community. Make sure that you're doing your part to uh, to try to help keep this uh, under control and get this back to a place where we can come back together as a family and as as a, a tribe. So, thank mm -hmm. you for coming on with me today. I didn't have any good jokes to share today. It's, it's kind of we're in the red, so it's not a time to really to, to play with this. But um, uh, we certainly want to make sure that we update the public as soon as uh, new things are coming on. I know that we're we talked a little bit off air about rapid testing and some of the information there that we want to share. We don't want to muddy the water today with that. So hopefully on our next uh, episode that we do, we'll talk more about the testing and some of the changes that Dr. Bunio is uh, implementing in the hospital uh, down the road. So Yeah, and, you know, for the community, I mean, we really do enjoy answering your questions. Um, sometimes the answers change. Yep. But uh, this is probably the most up-to-date information that we can get out to you. So Good. tune in and send us your questions. Good. We'll talk to you again very soon. Daddy Dog, I you.